Hello, welcome back to Fishing Without Bait, where we're continuing our conversation with our guitar virtuoso, Tim Vitula. Well, I would think that as you develop your skill level, your confidence in your guitar playing became greater, and hence your presence and your ability to speak to people because you all, you had that guitar in your hand. Mm-hmm. Did having the guitar in your hand just make it just more comfortable up there for you? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's I've gotten asked to do some things to like just come and sing, and I'm very uncomfortable in those gigs. Yeah, it, it really is. It it feels makes me feel at home. And I remember uh, tracking my first album. Even uh, it was advice from the producer when I was cutting vocals, just like, hey, you should just have your guitar on. Just hold it. Yeah. You know, don't play it while you're singing, obviously, but just to have it, it really did. Yeah. It just feels like more comfortable. It feels, you know, the approach is, is the same as every other time I do it. So it's, you know, like that, like I, I love baseball and I think it's a yeah. similar sensation. You know, you kind of go through your routine before you step into the batter's box. And Well, it's consistency. Mm-hmm. So how did you develop consistency? It's the, the not creative side of my brain. Um, yeah. Whenever I'm not, uh, singer songwriter and you know I, I went to engineering school and, uh-huh. and do engineering for a, a profession um so that that really that focus on processes and and um organ, organizing things that way like that my brain definitely uh craves those sorts of things and i think at home uh i would definitely be classified as like a creature of habit uh-huh. having a schedule and having a routine is a well, structure organization and discipline are very important in everything life and you can certainly be creative and imaginative uh here's what i usually tell people i encourage people to keep their head in the clouds and their feet on the ground yeah that's good advice i like that i like that a lot yeah i I hear people they well i'm going to go to north go to north carolina i'm going to raise alpacas and i'm going to grow uh grow violets for essential oils i said that sounds just absolutely fabulous i hope you pursue that how are you going to put gas in your car Mm mm-hmm that's I know here's what I tell people and that's the suck part of life. Yeah. No, and that's that's been a thing um for us certainly like we don't do it like it doesn't pay the bills for anyone in our band doing the music thing right now. Be cool if it if it could. That'd be a, a fun fun proposition to entertain. Um but I think that really like it allows us to be smart and and make those kind of value decisions about opportunities we take, about how we spend our time. Um, because it's not just like, Hey, I just need to keep moving or else I'm going to, I'm going to stop or I'm not going to be able to survive. So it, it's been nice. And that's kind of a nice thing to say, Hey, um, yeah, I do this on my, on my terms. Well, that's a lot about acceptance, Tim. A people say, well, if I don't get to this point by X number of years, then I'm a failure. A lot of people believe that. Yeah. I've seen something floating around especially like in the musician community and like creative community, um, like around social media and stuff. And it's, it's this reinforcement. And I, I, you know, obviously like I have a bias to, to buy into that, the theory, but just the thing, you know, if you play one show a year, like you're a professional, if you got paid to play one show a year, you're absolutely, you're a professional, you're doing it. It, you don't, what, why? Yeah. What, when did, Hey, I write musician on my tax return at the end of the year. When did that become like the, modicum of success you know mm-hmm. like the the moniker that like oh you've you've made it or you're doing the thing if you if you're making meaningful art that people are engaging with and, and reacting to that that's success well i think uh, winston churchill once said it's not uh what you're called it's what you answer to yeah a very good quote yeah, yeah. so i would probably expect that you'd be gratified to be called a musician yeah yeah i always it's always it's always nice and and uh yeah again just getting back to that like finding your tribe and finding where you belong like yeah it it fits and it feels good to that people can identify that like yeah yeah that is we often talk on this show about finding your herd and we often uh, caution people that if they like to bowl don't join a golf league yeah (laughs) but sometimes we try to ingratiate ourselves into some type of an organization whatever that we think we want to belong to Mm -hmm. yeah and that's it's so important to to find that community and i think that's again like getting older and you know now that 
you know, whenever you're 18 or something like that, you know, the idea of being a rock star and being rich and famous is, you know, that's very alluring. But um, yeah, as you get older and kind of understand what that actually means and can see the sides of it, that's something that I, I definitely value a lot more is the ability for music to create community. Um, and like, I, I think a good example, we just uh, participated in the Deutschtown Music Fest yes, yes, a couple yeah. weekends ago. And it was so cool to meet people and then like friends that we had uh, were performing on our stage. So we got to perform with them, ah. you know, and it was like, hey, you're going to be there. I'm going to have my stuff. Why don't we why don't we do something together? And it was a really cool, special moment um, that, that happened. And and those are those are whenever I think back to it, I'm not going to remember the riff I played it you know, minute, whatever of that song. But I'm going to remember that, that, that moment where I connected with somebody else. Eventually, Tim, we figure out what's important. Mm -hmm. So what's important to Tim Vitola? Ah, uh, oh man, that's a good question. Um, I think it's really important to wake up every day and be excited about what, what you might do that day. That's something I always try to position myself to, Hey, what, what, what's on my calendar? What am I doing? even if it's going to work, even if it's whatever it is and, and being excited about that. Um, I think that that's just, as I've gotten older and kind of established myself, you know, in my music career and other careers and other parts of life, uh, a little more that it, I just feel so much more confident, more excited and engaged to, to go about things. Um, we all need something to look forward to, Tim. Yeah. So what's Tim Vitula looking forward to? Uh, just continuing to grow, uh, continuing to, to build those relationships with people in my band and other people, continuing to find balance. That's something that the pandemic really um, brought to light for me is how uh, imbalanced my schedule was that I uh, was doing so much music at the detriment of so many other things. Um, yeah, that it's been really fun to to fall back in love with all those other parts of my life that uh, either took a back seat or, um, you know, were cut out completely. So the pandemic and the isolation affected so many things in so many different ways. And let's uh, play this scenario, Tim. 25 years from now, uh, you have a niece and nephew, you want whoever in your life, they're maybe 10 years old, 11 years old, and they come to Uncle Tim and they say, Uncle Tim, uh, we got an assignment from our teacher to interview somebody that lived through the pandemic. What would you tell them about that? I would say that for me, I think everybody had a different experience because it wasn't, yes, there were certainly like big picture things happening in the world and around the country that we all lived through and experienced, but it, the, the pandemic was so many small, quiet moments um, for me, you know, both good and bad that, that really defined that time. And that, that would be hard to, hard to distill to somebody, you know, just thinking about, yeah, just all these, these, these small moments. And I think that was always the thing is the realization you'd always almost kind of, I would kind of like pinch myself a little bit and just, Hey, I don't know if this will ever happen again. Um, or if I'll ever be in this set of circumstances again, and what it, what a surreal, what a surreal feeling that is. Um, but it was, it was small moments of, you know, certainly, you know, for instance, gigs got canceled and shows got canceled that, that we were planning to play and some really exciting ones. Um, but it, I kind of, then, then the time when we were going to be playing that gig and on the road or traveling would come, you know, and we had a very, you know, kind of tight knit group that we all kind of felt comfortable with how each other were handling the pandemic so we could get together mm -hmm. and have a little bit of interpersonal interaction. Um, and to really enjoy that moment and, and say, wow, I wouldn't have experienced what this felt like without that pandemic. Just, just as an example, just like, oh, this was such a, a great experience hanging out with friends or with family or with my partner. Um, yeah, I've been missing out on some of these things. So you were able to, there's two ends to the horse. The horse doesn't move. Uh, so the only thing you can do is move. Yeah. You can you can change your perspective. That's what I suggest. Generally, when I go to rehabs, I perform an interactive type of activity. I ask five or six people to stand in front of me, and I say, pretend I'm a smiling horse, and they, they humor me. 
But then I have them go around behind me and I bend over and I'll say, now what do you see? Well, I get some very colorful comments then. <laughs> but then I ask him the question, Tim. I said, here's the point to this exercise. Did the horse move? And then they start to catch on. They say, no. And I said, who moved? We did. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we go through life trying to change and manipulate people, places, and things to be the way that we want them to be rather than change our perspective of it. And it sounds like we weren't able to change the situation of the pandemic. Yeah. However, it sounds like you were able to change your perspective of it. Yeah. Yeah. And just try to yeah, be present for it and not, not, you know, obviously saying not wish it away is kind of an odd thing to say, because certainly we would have liked it to end sooner than, than it did. But yeah, to not wish your life away and just kind of blow by. Well, there were so many, there were so many businesses, there were so many performers. They just lost momentum. Yeah. And the inertia set in. Yeah. So how did you keep the spark alive? How did you keep uh, the Tim Vitula experience alive? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that that was really hard. That was a major challenge. And uh, I definitely had successes and had failures in, in that, that charge. Um, for me, it was really nice. Uh, and something since um, it forced to strip away all the things that are not really music related. And we were kind of talking a little bit before, um, you know, I don't have representation. I don't have a booking agent. I don't have a manager. So if we're traveling, you know, I'm booking hotels, I'm booking rental cars if we need them, you know, I'm figuring out, but you know, I, I used to have to put these itineraries together because it, you know, you look on Google maps and you say, Oh, it takes three hours to get there, but it never takes you three hours to get there. Cause you got to stop, you got to get dinner, sure. you got to get gas you got to do all those things. So trying to like think through this weekend itinerary or this, you know, four or five day itinerary of, Hey, okay, we're going to leave. We're going to meet here at this time. And then it's going to take us 30 minutes to load up the car. And then we're going to leave at that time to start driving. And then we're going to arrive at this time. And then we have an hour to get dinner and here's some of the places around. So think about what you might want to get, um, you know, or if you want, we can eat on the road or whatever it was and, and all these things. So all, all these things or the accounting or the, the social media or, or stuff that has nothing to do with making music. Um, and that was really nice for me personally to make all those things go away and get back to like the joy of songwriting. Uh -huh. I wrote a ton of songs uh, during that period. You know, some still haven't been released yet. Um, and it was just fun to like wake up every day and you know, the hour I would have spent maybe doing something like that. It was, Hey, I got a new song and then I'd send it to the band and they, you know, maybe one of the guys would say, Oh, I, I came up, you know, send me a phone recording. I came up with a, a complimentary part to that. It's okay. so cool. So that, that was really nice. And even to get those lifelines back from mm. other people in the band to like, Hey, we're out there and we're not forgetting about this. Uh. Like we're thinking about it too. And that kind of, you know, misery loves company, uh. but good to get those lifelines. Well, you had people who had the same type of passion. Like we, we said, finding, finding our herd. Uh, however, there must have been some fairly dark times where you were wondering whether this was going to continue. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I think, you know, we asked, like, what is the special thing? Like, part of that was I put together a really great band. Yes. And that was part of what was special about what it was. So I really never played by myself uh, to that point. Um, and that was hard to, to not be able to satiate the the needs and the wants of everybody in the band uh so that they felt like you know we were progressing or working at a, a pace at which was acceptable um yeah and really forced me to to figure out how to play by myself uh to take some of those opportunities and part of that was you know driven by venues not having capacity uh, uh you know some of the weird things you think about you know i had some venues say well yeah, I'd love to have your band, but I'm at 50% capacity. And if three people are your band, well, that's three people who aren't, you know, paying tabs. So yeah. I just can't afford it. Uh, I can't afford to, to have a band. Um, so that was tough. And that was really scary. Uh, it almost felt kind of like going back to square one yeah. in a ways. And especially when really the only uh, sounding board I had for it was live streaming mm -hmm. or online events where, uh, you know, as we were talking, that, that feedback loop is really interrupted. How did you find that experience? Um, I thought it was a really fun challenge um, at first. I think the thing that's really hard about it is keeping it fresh um, and not 
not making, you know, or, or trying to do something different, like something that was really nice. Uh, whenever I first started doing it from the house, um, so I almost tried to like think about it like an episode of like Carson ah. or something like that. So, and there are some podcasts I listen to do that where I would play a song and then maybe the next song I chose, there was a little bit of a story behind it, you know, or was current event related, you know, you know, we lost so many famous musicians during that time, either due to COVID or just, you know, natural causes. Uh, so featuring those artists work is kind of a bit of current events or a new unreleased song. Hey, we've been writing and here's something to be excited about seeing whenever this is over. Well, one of the most challenging things during all that was pe- keeping people engaged during your virtual streaming. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We did almost exclusively teletherapy during that time. Mm-hmm. And there's few things that are more effective than being in a room in another person's presence. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. And even, yeah, those appointments yeah, did, did similar things, you know, now being able to go and meet in person. Yeah. I find me personally on the other end of that. So has everything opened up for you folks? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is as much as they are, we've been traveling and, and catching up on all the things we missed. Um, you know, while still kind of being as cautious as we can. We talked a little earlier about you doing session work mm-hmm. and could you maybe explain to people out there what session work is the, for those who don't know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, the simple term is, um, you know, there's a lot of singer songwriters or artists out there who don't play every instrument or don't have a band. Um, so they need to put a band together to make their record cause they want the record to have the full sound, but, um, necessarily don't want to employ uh, everyone to do that or they choose to perform as a solo act uh, for you know creative or economic reasons uh, so you you employ somebody to come in and basically be a band for hire uh, to do that um, you know and that could be for for any instrument or you could you could hire a whole band or you could hire individuals and I've done I've done it both ways okay yeah how do you get those gigs Tim I uh, keep Keep your ears open. Uh, I just met with with somebody who was asking about how you get work in it. I think it's like any any kind of thing. You'll just read the paper a lot, look at classifieds, you know, talk to a lot of people and listen to what they're up to, and uh, just try to find opportunities where you can help. Wishing and hoping and waiting for something happen generally doesn't work. This is true. Yeah, you, you definitely have to be proactive in the way where whenever you hear of an opportunity or uh, something to make sure that you express interest in we've, doing it. We've often said that if you don't ask Tim, the answer is always no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, my, my partner's grandpa, he, he used to always say, uh, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. a, that's exactly correct. So we were, we were talking earlier about, uh, the anomaly that although you're from Pittsburgh where we're sitting, uh, you perform mainly in other places, particularly Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. Maryland's been great to us. Thankfully, we're really appreciative. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's always been, um, an ethos I carried into this band from, from past projects where, um, you know, just because you live a certain place doesn't mean necessarily that that's where all the people who are going to champion your art happen to be. Yes. Um, you know, and the internet has opened our eyes to that in a ah. huge way. And that, you know, with social media and streaming services and all this, you know, our music's more accessible than ever. You don't have to physically go buy a, a physical copy to, to hear it. Well, the Clarks is certainly one of my favorite bands. I've heard yeah. them play a few times, but they seem to play exclusively around the Pittsburgh area. They don't seem to want to uh, travel too far outside. Yeah, and it, and I know I I've, I've met those guys and kind of cross paths with them here and there and I don't know what their their priorities are now and what they're interested in doing. Um it's definitely hard, but I think, you know, to counter as well. I mean, Pittsburgh loves them to death. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, if if we got that kind of love in Pittsburgh all the time, um yeah, I I don't know. I'd I'd be curious if we would make the same decision to, to travel as much as yes. We, well, we I certainly love to have them around here. Yeah. Uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to expose people. We'd like to give them this platform on which perhaps to grow. And I don't give compliments, uh, unnecessarily. Uh, and I'm not easily impressed him. I was, I'm incredibly impressed with your technical ability on the guitar. Thank you very much. Definitely impressed. Thank you. And uh, 
what we'd like to hope perhaps to end the show would be for you to maybe perform for us if you could. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Okay. This song's called Dog Song. Uh, haven't put it out yet, so please, if you like it, stay tuned. Let us know. We can go and cut it real quick for you. I uh, hope you like it. I went running through the forest of trees And my bare feet kissed the old city streets I heard stories handed down from the breeze Those featherweight verses taught me to get by with ease You may not recognize the words that I speak But you'll come to know them in less than a week Every dog has its day and you know today will be mine Cause I'm wide awake and free to be loved and the living's just fine Friends and lovers, they hear my call But still some rebuke me, they say I'm worth nothing at all What do they know beyond what's in their head? There's so much more than the leather-bound books they read You may not recognize the words that I speak But you'll come to know them in less than a week Every dog has its day and you know today will be mine Cause I'm wide awake and free to be loved and the living's just fine Days turn to weeks, the months flashing by Your time is too fragile to save Last seasons change, routines must rearrange Cause love won't wait for the madness to move not recognize the words that I speak But you'll come to know them in less than a week Every dog has its day and you know today will be mine Cause I'm wide awake and free to be loved and the living's just fine Yes, I'm wide awake, I'm free to be loved, and the living's just fine. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutbait.com, where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.